Welcome to the Love of the Star podcast. I'm Bobby Bell, Dallas Cowboys insider for 105.3 The Fan in Dallas, joined as always by former NFL scout. He is a Super Bowl winner, Brian Broadus. He is the co-host of the G-Bag Nation, 2 to 7 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday on 105.3 The Fan in Dallas. He's also the pre- and post-game co-host on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. And Brian, it took three takes, but we got the show off the ground here to, to start. that. We, we got us jump started. We're good. We're ready to go. And we have football to talk about real world football, uh, the first preseason game, a 13 to 12 loss to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, before we get into any specifics about players or, you know, takeaways, and I know what you saw in the film and uh, everything that came out of this game, any uh, kind of broad takeaways from this one for you before we drill down to specifics? You know, I was glad to see that preseason is rolling on. And I know there's a lot of people. I was on with you guys this morning on 105.3 The Fan and on the Sean and RJ show with Bobby. Mm -hmm. And I was asked by Sean Sharif about my entertainment factor. You know, and, and Sean is the king of if I'm not entertained, I'm not interested, I don't want to talk about this thing. And yeah. as a former personnel guy, I couldn't tell you how happy I was to see football being played. And I'm so happy being here in Oxnard, still with practices going on. They're throwing me a bonus on Wednesday. I get to watch another Rams practice here, yeah. you know, another. Uh, so, yeah, anything that, that you can do to get a better feeling for the team how they might be constructed and also though seeing guys that are practicing well get an opportunity to see if they can carry it to the field and that to me is one of the most satisfying things as as an evaluator now just being in media is like you see guys having good days practicing and then they go play where they play 15, 20, 35 plays, whatever, and they have some success. And I think there's – you don't always focus on the score. I know I told you and Sean and them that I hate to lose in anything, so I hate losing preseason games. But the fact that they really were able to get through this game without any significant injuries, we'll see what happens with the toe with Chuma Adoga. Mm-hmm. And we're waiting on the MRI on that. I don't know if anything's been posted since. I have not. I was just looking it up. A and I was ago. walking around. Yeah, I was walk. I walked uh, in after my radio show. I walked over and didn't run into anybody that could have helped me there. But they were doing an MRI on that. But overall, to get to to see the guys do uh, some work, get a game situations. Uh, I, I I absolutely love this. I, I'm terrified for the personal guys, for the injuries that happen around the league, but I'm also happy that we're actually getting to see guys practice and play football. Well, let's uh, let's start with, uh, let's just go down some, some key players, uh, some guys we were interested in seeing. The headliner in this one, uh, obviously Trey Lance. That's who everyone's yeah. going to be watching throughout this time. Uh, give me a... a a perspective answer here in terms of how you felt about Trey Lance when you watched it live and then when you went back and you watched the tape did anything look different or or did you get pretty much confirmed for you everything that you felt like you had seen well there were a couple of times where Trey Lance his numbers could have been better and it could have been better from the touchdown aspect of it Um, there were Three plays, the one that we all saw was the fourth down play. He's made better throws. He's made that throw. They've practiced that fade. And Dak has done it. Cooper's done it. Yep. They've all done it. And they've had some success doing it. I could see why McCarthy went to it. And, you know, and you know, Trey just threw the ball too far. Um they had another opportunity where when Trey when Trey gets locked in and he doesn't see the field, he misses opportunities. He had a chance with Cropper down the seam for a touchdown on a play that he went inside, made a much tougher throw that ended up being an incomplete. Whereas if he would have just maybe 
given given it a little bit more and allow Cropper to get a little further up the field, that that could have been a touchdown. I mean, that's that's reading defenses, that's understanding where you're at, um, and potentially what the defense is going to try and give you there. He had an opportunity later on where uh, he is going to throw the they 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 put uh, they put Princeton Fant in like a wing set and they run him on a like a release what we would call an arc release where he arcs out and then up the sidelines and to that side of the field they took uh, Nathaniel Pete and ran him to the flat and it drew the safety as Fant was running past so literally nobody covering Fant and you almost thought it was a play a design call because of how everything you get this you get a route that kind of clears you get another clear and then you get the wheel up the sidelines and I'm thinking my gosh if he sees Fant that's a touchdown Mm -hmm. so there are things that you don't see at the game and then you go back and look at you're like he missed some opportunities. Uh, it was clear that there were passes that were completed that weren't on target. Receivers did a really nice job of adjusting uh, to the ball when it was thrown. A couple of them didn't adjust uh, too well. Uh, you know, Racy McMath didn't have a particularly great game with the two no. targets that he had back to back that cost him an opportunity. But if you look at the other receivers. You know, they, they did a pretty solid job. And the thing that was, when you look at the metrics at the end, and I took a peek at the numbers just to see, I'm like curious, you know, when when he was under pressure, say when he was getting blitzed, when he was getting blitzed, he was two of eight throwing the yeah. football for 10 yards. When there was no blitz, no pressure, he was 19 to 26. So, to me, that kind of tells you a little bit of some of the story when he's faced the pressure and his ability to read. So, you take the numbers, the metrics, and you apply it to where, you know, what you saw in the film. And he missed some opportunities. And I guarantee you when he sat, sits down and watches the tape, which I'm sure he has, he's going to see like, damn, I should have seen that or I should have seen that, or I should have read that. And I think he would have had a, a, a better day throwing the ball with, with some touchdowns to, next to his name. Yeah, and I, I mean, look, there were there are times it wasn't totally accurate. There, there are also times, I mean, the receivers didn't help him. Like you said, Ray sure. McMath, there were a couple others where there was maybe a, a bobble and a drop. I think Florino had a, a bobble and a drop. Yeah. Um, and so it, it didn't, they didn't necessarily help him out a ton. Um, and you saw what was on display in terms of, man, he's he's hard to bring down. And he's really yeah, athletic. He really and, is. And there's a lot there that, that you you like and you see and go, man, that's a that's a nice trait there. It's just you you got to wonder about how elite are the passing traits and how, how much can you fix some of the processing or, or some of the identification stuff. And so that'll be one of the things that they have to wrestle with. Uh, another guy who had a lot of attention on him this game, and I think in the immediate aftermath of the game was getting some unfair criticism on social media was Mozzie Smith, yeah. who uh, I don't think Mozzie Smith played poorly uh, for a lot nope. of that. He definitely looked winded on the last drive that he was in on. Yep. Um, but he was somebody who I thought – did a nice job but the the very first run of the game i think where neeland came in and made a play uh i thought he did a good job not losing ground and uh you know making sure that that gap was filled and so uh what did you ultimately think about the way that mozzie smith played jeff sugina the defensive line coach coaches him hard and the one of the things he coaches him very hard on is hand placement and extension Mm -hmm. better this game better extending into the blocker uh you know when you look at uh how he played it's always the question about you know is he letting the blockers get into him yep and that's where he gets into trouble and you're 
you're kind of like this when you're watching him play. You're like, come on, man. They're, you know, just extend. Just extend. Show some power. You got some upper body power. But Bo Limmer, who draft pick for the Rams, probably going to be a future starting center for him. He had a really nice game against Bo Limmer. And I I mean, as far as extending on him, controlling him. Now, where Mozzie, and we've talked about this, the gas, where he gets a little tired, Mm -hmm. had a really nice play we saw where he defended the screen. He controls the block, he gets off the block, and now he's in position to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage or for a loss and gets it done. So you're like thinking... Really good positive play there. Yeah. Very next play, non-factor. Non-factor. Not a good rush. Not a good stance. Not good extension. You know, kind of, you know, it's like he took a play off. You know, where you're like going, damn, Ozzy, that was really a good play against the screen. Good recognition. Good getting over. Good finish. You know, those are the things he's always capable of doing. But the very next play, he acts like that he had to run 100 yards yeah. to make that play. And that's where I believe that they look at him and they say, okay, capable, but he just doesn't do it consistently. And when you make a good play, there's been times where, especially with him, he'll back it up with, you know, you'll see a good rep or, or a decent rep. Because when when he when he he gets to the point where it's four or five plays in a row, now it's a problem. His I mentioned his stance is bad, his get off is bad, his extension is bad. He doesn't fight the blockers. It's kind of like okay, I'm I'm going to take this play off when they can't afford to have him take the play off. No. But when you hear Mike McCarthy talk about consistency and Mozzie, believe it. Because he needs to gain more of that now is I'm I'm for continuing to play him until he gets into shape. That's me. But me I I'm a little bit I, 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 I'm I think any criticism he got in this game was unwarranted, in my opinion. Because I think he, I think it was a positive game for him overall. When you do not see the five and the eight on his jersey turn to you on the sideline shot, you know that he's playing square and holding the spot. And that's that's what he was able to do several times. And he had to face some double team blocks that he handled okay. So uh, any any criticism of him I, I don't think was justified. Yeah, I, like you say, other than just the other than the other did, than the it's, yeah, it's, it's the conditioning stuff with it him. is but, it's but conditioning. It, but if you want to talk about the conditioning, the effort, maybe that wasn't always consistent. The technique yesterday, though, it felt like was like he was just he was more better doing what he's supposed better. to do. Yes, and yes, that's that's big for him. Um, and you hope that it can click into place. Um, let's talk really quickly. Um, just a real quick note, and then we can expand on it a little bit, but. Um, I mentioned Nealon on the first play and, and Mozzie there. Tyler Guyton seemed to get a lot of high marks for people, even though, man, on that second series he was in on, you want to talk about winded. It was, it looked clear to me, him standing on the field, he was sucking wind. He's just, you know. Can't breathe. Back. Yeah, he's still getting back <laughs> from that illness. Yeah. Um, but overall, the top two picks for the Cowboys, what did you think when you looked at them on tape, Guyton and Marshawn Nealon? Yeah, I think with Guyton, the very first snap that he took, he got a little overextended and was kind of ducking his head and ducked in trying to kind of stop the charge of Vanden Valkenberg, the man with the incredible last name. Very good job, Brian. Yeah, and when Vanden Valkenberg had a chance to beat him and Guyton was able to adjust back, even with being overextended and maybe ducking his head a little bit, was able to recover and then get back on the play. But he was really good in his pass sets. He was exceptionally good. I know we had questions about him as a run blocker. How much run blocking has he really done? But 
two-point stance coming off the ball, getting into the defender, getting some movement. That Van Valkenburg, when he was playing against others, he was having success. When he was playing against Guyton, he wasn't having success. So I think it's a good. I think it was a good start uh, for Guyton in, in this uh, in this particular preseason game. When you look at when when you look at Nealon, Nealon has got the skills to play both the left and the right end. He's going to continue to work as a pass rusher. He's got to get better as a pass rusher. He's going to get better with this technique because he does everything that they ask him to do. He try he he bends, he swats, he grabs, he does see he's trying to play with technique. He is in my opinion is going to be the starter at right end when they open against Cleveland. He's going to be the starter at right end. Now, we'll see. They uh, yesterday in the game, they used Golston some at end. And they used Fajoko summon end. I I think this is I think this is Nealon's job to lose. And I think he gives you enough playing the run and he's gonna give you something as a pass rusher, and the more that he gets pass rush work, probably the better he's gonna play. You are listening to the Love of the Star Podcast, the Love of the Stars and Odyssey Podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, um, let, let's talk about Neyland uh, just again for one more quick second here. One of the things that I do like about him that I think you saw you know, at Western Michigan, and one of the things it feels like we've seen in these practices, you see in these games, he seems to do a really good job of he's not the guy who you'll hear the descriptor of sometimes of, oh, once you get, once you get your hands on him, he's finished. Yeah. He's not. He does a really good job of, you know, being able to disengage from blocks, being able to shed blockers and make a play there. And it looked like we're, we're getting positive. You, you mentioned the, some of the pass rush stuff, some of the pass rush tools that are, are showing up or, or the ability to do it. It looks like we're not going to have the same sort of concerns that you had with Tristan Hill or like we're talking about still with Mozzie Smith or back in the day, Taco Charlton, that you've got a guy in Neyland who appears to be progressing at the rate you want to see and showing the kind of flashes that say this is somebody who's ready to contribute on some level give you nfl snaps right away i i'm saying starting bobby i don't know who else you're going to play at right end you know i i don't know who else you know i it, you have somebody in mind no i i mean obviously if you're just talking about parsons being a stand-up player and not being somebody involved on the line of scrimmage then yeah i would you're probably looking at it having to be Neyland or yeah, Golston. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Like yeah, I'm interested to see. You know, I'm, we're seeing Parsons. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. Because uh, I think of Parsons now so much is how much linebacker he's actually playing. You know, do they do they find a way to do they find a way to put Neil and Parsons kind of on the same side. Does he I play? Think they, I think they'd like to have Parsons on the field with Neil and. Lord I do too. Oh. I do too. I do too. Yeah, I do too. Uh, all right, let's take a look at some of the other guys who showed up. Brian, I personally got excited. It was very short, but and I know you went back and watched it on tape a little bit, um, and and maybe I'm getting overly excited. But it's really hard. Last year, it was really hard not to get excited about Demarvi and Overshone, and then he steps in there and coming off the ACL. We've seen so many guys in this building just not trust their knee coming back it's just it's a mental hurdle that all got not just here in dallas that's something that people deal with across the nfl just trusting that knee again and man he looked pent up ready to go didn't let blockers get hands on him making the right reads um playing you know quick reaction playing discipline under control i i really loved watching that play from overshone yesterday but just also just seeing him on the field and and doing what he needs to do and and giving good indicators that he's going to be ready to go. Yeah, he's a uh, for a big guy. He's got some slippery traits to him. Uh, there were a couple times where the Rams tried to scoop block him, and he was able to work between the double teams and get into the backfield. Um, he's got that kind of ability when he's attacking. He's downhill. He's a good wrap up tackler. Um, he's a physical player. You're right about the confidence in the way he's playing because he he could have played tentatively. He could have like tried to kind of take on blocks and kind of move around 
uh, gingerly. He didn't do that. He was playing with aggressiveness. He was playing downhill. Um, he is only going to get better. He and Clark both. I, I just love how two young guys and really how athletic both those guys are as players and, and what they bring to your and to your defense. Yeah, and Clark is one who we've talked about it. You need to make it you need to make it a little more simplified for him. And I think that's one of the things that Overshone is going to be able to really help with. Um, and Kendricks and other guys is they're going to be able to help assist in some of those areas because that was the tough thing last year for for Clark. You've mentioned it before, Brent. He's playing next to Marquise Bell a lot of times. Who Bell is a he's a yeah. safety. He's not yeah. a linebacker. And so yeah. uh, you you were you're trying to make you know lemonade with lemons. Um, but the the reality is that you needed to strengthen that linebacker group. And it looks like it's been improved. It looks like it's, you know, stabilized a little bit more. And Overshone is a guy that I'm really excited about. The corner play yesterday is something that I think a lot of people got, uh, you know, a little uneasy about. Um, yeah. Watching Carson, watching Eric Scott. Scott came up with the interception, but he was not he was not consistently good enough. He had a bad penalty. He had, mm. you know, got picked on a little bit. Carson got picked on a little bit. Did yeah. it look any better to you on tape than it did the first watch on TV? Yeah, no, they got picked on. And, you know, Carson was six for six on targets and catches, you know, and but you gotta give you gotta give the Rams, you know, a little bit some credit though. Uh man, uh you know, Jordan Winnington looks like a legitimate player. Welcome. Yeah, and you know <laughs> Uh, Russell, uh, or excuse me, not Russell, Robinson for them. Demarius Robinson. I mean, they, they've got some guys. Uh, Tyler Johnson, they've got some legitimate type players that that can make some plays. But, yeah, this this was a good learning experience for those corners. You know, they've been covering guys out here, been getting opportunities, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Just keep throwing them out there. You know, keep throwing them out there and, and see how things – uh, you know, shake out. I think one of these guys is going to have to. I think one of these guys is going to have to step up, just to be ready in case something does happen with Diggs. You know, I mean, you want to make sure. And me personally, I think Carson's that guy. But for his, you know, he was he was really good in the scrimmage the other day. A little bit more of a struggle for him in the game. But I'm just going to keep throwing him out there because I think the guy's got a lot of ability. He's got toughness. He'll tackle. He'll cover. You know, he'll 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 figure out uh, these routes and how to play them better. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think uh, Carson is somebody who. What I like about him is he's he's competitive. He's nasty. He's got a toughness to him. He was willing mm-hmm. to. the The first real fight we got out there in Oxnard was him taking on Brevin Span Ford, who's significantly heavier than him. Um, he's not afraid of a scrap, and, and I think that fits in well with the guys you have in the secondary there, and uh, yeah. you know Trayvon Diggs and Jordan Lewis, and some of that edge, some of that tenacity. I, I trust that that'll be a humbling experience for him, but also a motivating experience, just yeah. given what we've learned about Kalen Carson to this point. Um, and, and it just seems like the defensive staff is, you know, they're big fans of his. I want to ask you about uh, two defensive tackles here in a second. Before I do that, I told you yesterday. Uh, when we were doing the post game show, the, the the guy who popped on screen to me first yesterday, where I was like, "Man, some of this is looking impressive," and it's always one of the more dangerous positions to try and scout when you're watching it live on TV. But it was uh, it was awesome, Richards. Yeah. I watched him get out, you know, pull block, and when I saw him, you know, anchor and pass protection a couple times, I I thought he looked really good overall. Uh, did the tape show that? Um, were there any struggles? Because I know there were some people who felt like it, it looked like there were some people saying that they felt like Richards had a couple reps that were a bit of a struggle. But overall, what did you think of the way Awesome Richards looked inside at guard? Awesome Richards is happy to play guard. He likes playing guard more than he likes playing tackle. And so, you know, he's going to likely play both. But he feels like that he's a better guard than he is a tackle. And he likes that part of it. Um your eyes did not deceive you. There were some good reps. There was one run where he didn't get his head across. He was late off the ball, and he was trying to get his head across the defender, and the defender ended up making the play at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. But he's, he's got to do a better job of when coming off the ball – 
we're talking about guys with conditioning again. You know, you're going to play a lot of snaps, play a lot of snaps in a row. Um, the majority of his snaps were good, but there was the time when, you know, you've got to get that block. You've got to make that cutoff block, and you got to get your head across. And if you don't get your head across, it's going to be a tackle for loss. And in this case, it was. But the pass sets, the overall run blocking, I think we're in a positive direction for him. All right, let's look at the uh, defensive tackle side now before we get to the mailbag um, because this was one of the things that a, a contrast of sorts. First, Albert Huggins, I, I saw a lot of getting driven back. In fact, I think yeah. some of the criticism of Mozzie Smith was people saw the 68 on the back. Yeah. I thought it was 58, to be honest. Right, right. Um, but Albert Huggins didn't look very good uh, no. live the first time. I'm curious, um, do you think that's – is that a fair – thing to, is that a fair performance to hold against him right now given the fact he just walked in here and that's like rest. does he need some time to get his feet under him you know me i i i try to be fair i think that is more about him arriving late in camp than anything and i think they're trying to get him because you could watch him play for the falcons and he played five games started five games he played so much better than what he showed yesterday. So I'm going to say conditioning. I'm going to say game speed, uh, maybe getting getting going again. He'll get another opportunity this uh, this week against the Raiders, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't a good start. It wasn't a good start, and he has shown in practice where he's had some decent reps, but that that was a that was a struggle for him. The, the other name I wanted to ask you about, a defensive tackle, uh, it's a guy you had talked positively about in our last episode, and that was Justin Rogers. He looked yeah. like he, he acquitted himself nicely yesterday. Um, the, the thing with Rogers is, like you had touched on last week, he's always going to have high motor, high effort. Yeah. He, he's, you're not going to see him taking plays off. Uh, that's something that's going to put him in a position – right there to just make plays or be in position to make plays that you know a, a lot of other people aren't because they don't play with that kind of consistent effort and intensity and motor how did he look uh when you watch that do you, do you think yeah he's on track right now for this roster yeah no i i think so i mean you what you everything you mentioned about him is absolutely true and uh they had the defensive line if you look at metrics they had one run stuff at tackle and he had the run stuff you know, he had several tackles. He was active. He was up the field. You know, he, he got off blocks. He was physical. You know, he he, he was the, the, the effort that he gave was really good. And he, he probably got a little wore down. But you, you felt like that the times when he was on the field that he was playing to the best of his ability. And I, I like the way he's, he plays with his hands. He's, he's strong. He can move down the line. He could shed blocks. He can make tackles. And he's going to give you maybe a little bit more pass rush than some of the other guys. Mozzie, Mozzie's capable pass rusher. He just doesn't always do it. We saw it in this, you know, the scrimmage the other day. Yeah, He's capable of pass rushing. Just doesn't always do it. I think Rodgers tries to be not only a run defender, but, a, but somewhat of a guy not only pushing the pocket, but getting some, some pass rush with some moves. You are listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love of the Star is an Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, it is now time for our Dean Julia Love the Star mailbag, where we turn things over to our dear, sweet listeners, get their thoughts, their questions, their comments, talk about what they want to talk about. And we have a celebrity in our mailbag this week, Brian. One uh, Fox Sports host, FS1 host, David Hellman, is All our right. first question today. Uh, he's a bum. Uh, David Hellman says, assuming they add two to three players over cut weekend, which position or positions aside from running back would you guess they address? Okay. How do you feel about how do you feel about offensive tackle? And yeah. as a as a backup. I, I was gonna say tackle would be my answer. Offensive and defensive. Yeah, because offensive I, they got plenty of guys who can play guard. I don't know how many guys they have that can play tackle consistently. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's funny you mention it, and the, even the linebacker that they added, uh, Nick, uh, vigil. is it mm -hmm. vigil? 
Nick Vigil had a, a tackle on special teams, you know, and that's kind of what he does, you know. So you wonder if a guy like Nick Vigil becomes a special teams guy, the the last linebacker, that you know, kind of stuff. But I have a feeling if you if you if you said the three positions that they might add a guy, running back, defensive tackle, offensive tackle. Yep, those would be my three. I think that's right. I, I mean, maybe they. It's a good question, Dave. Yeah, it is good a good question. question. Maybe, maybe they look to uh, maybe they look to add another edge rusher. They obviously were interested in adding one when they brought in Muhammad. Um, so maybe they look at things there and, and you know wonder about their depth. Um, but overall, I think yeah, that's the area we're looking at. You know what? It's it's sides. it's funny. It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that. And the more you know, after I listen to you say that, <laughs> I've said that three times now. <laughs> Defensive end could be that spot. It, it depending on what happens with, do they move Golston? Do they do something? Does Fajoko make the team? Does he play? You know, uh, but maybe maybe it would be, maybe it would be, edge over, offensive tackle. I mean, it, it could be because I mean they've got a lot of different guys that, like I wonder, I wonder a little bit. I, I think they. At the very least, think in a pinch, maybe Bass could do something for them. Um, Ball had a a decent game yesterday. Yeah, like, they just. I, I wonder if they look and say we got enough guys, and Solari focuses enough on cross training. We could still use another edge rusher, but it's it, those are definitely you're looking at trenches. If you're not talking yeah. about running back, you're looking at the trenches where I think a Earl lot of Bostic gave pressure. up the most pressures yesterday. Yeah. So and Earl Bostic's likely not going to make this football team but you know who's going to be if a doga is always kind of you know the thing with the doga if we get long term where he might be out you know they're going to have to look at a tackle i think they are um I, i'll i'll see if we can answer this one first brian have you gotten a chance to look in any more into andrew booth since we last talked yeah okay, i gave a scouting uh, report on him didn't okay I? all right great uh i've got a question here from Christian, uh, do you think that Andrew Booth can make this roster? What are your thoughts on him uh, as an addition? Yeah, uh, man, I've been on so many platforms that I, I forget who I give scouting reports to and who I don't do scouting reports to. But uh, hold on just a second here. Um, while you pull that up, the, I think I it's important right to note that the, the Booth trade is similar to, and we referenced this last time, it's Kelvin Joseph for Noah Igbenogany. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's it's money for money. It's basically the same money as what it is. Yeah, so. just see, see if it works. See if yeah. a, a refresher helps them. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> a couple of my scouting buddies from the Vikings, they were on yeah. the road. They wanted the scouting report on uh, – on Nation Wright. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to give him the scouting report on him. But uh but here we go. Like this, you know, Booth, you know, he plays on the outside. There's people that think that maybe he could be a nickel or slot corner. I, I me personally, I at Clemson, I didn't see him play out I saw him play outside. I saw at Minnesota he play outside too. So I don't know, maybe people are thinking because of his size and all that. But he's got good reactions. He's aware of what happened in front of him. He's not afraid to fill in the run. He is a 50-50 tackler, and he was one at he was a 50-50 tackler at Clemson is what he was. Uh, but you know, he got burned on a double move in the Seahawks game. But they they play so much. He played a lot of zone coverage. He plays a lot of zone coverage at Clemson. So you know, with Mike Zimmer, Mike likes to play some zone coverage. So this is going to probably be one of those opportunities to get a guy that was a second round pick. You know, the Viking guys are like, "Hey, we're moving on from our guy. You're moving on from your guy. Let's just trade and see if the change of scenery will do something." But the guy, he's he's got quickness. He can drive on the ball. I mentioned about the fifty fifty tackler. Uh, he runs well. He moves well. He plays with a burst when he has to carry receivers. I just didn't see a whole hell of a lot of opportunities for him other than, like I say, the couple of times in that one game against the Seahawks, they got him on a double move, the the sluggo, the slant go, and he bit, and they got the touchdown on him. So, uh, But this this time of year, you're trading guys out that maybe he's not working here and your guy's not working here, but 
you you find somebody it it, it works out for for both parties. Better player than Nashawn Wright from what you saw. I would say so. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, next question here from Jeffrey. We just talked about a lot of different people. One of the guys we didn't get to, uh, Jeffrey is asking, uh, Cooper BB seemed to have some solid snaps and a mean streak on Sunday. Uh, do you think this will open up the center position battle? No. I, no, I think Mike Solar has determined who this center is. I did. And, and, and Hoffman but, but was... But how did you and, think BB did overall? I think overall he was good. He, he um, you know, when he had to help, he was very aware uh, when he had the one-on-one stuff, he was he was good with that. Um, he gave up a pressure. They say he gave up a sack. I don't know about that, but that's what they say. So um, you know the run fits. I think were good when he, but when he was uncovered, you could tell that he was aware to, you know, if if uh, Awesome Richards needed help or Ball needed help, he was there to provide. So. I like what I saw from him. I liked what I saw from him the other day in the scrimmage with him now getting to the second level. Um, but, you know, they've got to they've got to find ways now, I mean, to, like I say, to continue to work with him on the mechanics, the, the snap, the step, the sustain, the hand placement, all those things he's going to have to work on, but he's getting better at it. Yeah, and he's somebody who – he. He moves better. I think he's looked better moving. Obviously, it's different when you're in these, you know, pads and everything else. But I, right. I was more impressed with him during well, games and everything else. He moves better than I think at times I saw on his Kansas State tape. Yeah, they had a they had a, a tackle for loss, and he missed. and And I always hate to do this because I'm not absolutely positively sure. But from my experience of how they were down, down, and around with their blocks, you know, they were filling for the pulling guard. He missed a, a block back that ended up in for a tackle for loss. So he was he went straight ahead instead of blocking back, and that gave the defender a free free run into the backfield, and that ended up being a tackle for loss. And I think that was the one missed assignment that he had. Uh, we'll finish up here with another question in the trenches. I think this is an interesting one from Matt. Uh, if Dallas keeps 71, 76, 66, and 56 uh, as the backup offensive line. That's nine guys, right? Yep. Who goes in and plays right tackle if Steele has an injury? None of these guys have had time there in camp, really. Would it be – would it be – Richards probably Richards. Richards has taken some snaps at, at right tackle. My guess um, would my guess would be it would be Richards. Yeah. Would there be any thought? Do you think to Guyton going there since he played right in college? None. Well, that's. Are you saying that he's starting it? He's starting it. Like he, if he's at left, left tackle, tackle, right? And, right. Yeah. If he starts at left tackle and then. Steel goes down. Would they potentially yeah. flip and then put Schumann at left? I, I think I think I think he would play. Uh, that's a good question. I, I think that they would leave him. I think they leave the rookie over there. I think that's what they would do. I, I think probably. I just wonder if it would be a discussion that they would have, just because Guyton has been a right side player. Uh, that's although, true. I will say that's one of the underrated things we have not talked about this game. Guyton has looked completely comfortable doing left side football. It, it's amazing. There's, not, there's been it, no issues there. Not at all. No problems. All right, that does it for us here today on the Love the Star podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will have a, a brand new practice with the Rams this week that Brian will be out there for. There's a Raiders game coming up. It's that classic August 9 p.m. start on a Saturday. Uh, when they get one of those West not Coast for me. preseason games. Yeah, not for you, but for, for over here it will be. Um, but we will have some uh, more reaction for you this week. Hopefully we'll have some news soon on C.D. Lamb getting a new contract or reporting to camp. Uh, where it's getting close. Tick-tock. Uh, clock is ticking here. Um, but we'll be with you the whole way. For Brian Broaddus, I'm Bobby Belt. We will talk to you guys again later. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.